Hello, we are on the road, the lovely Julia and I. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Sorry this isn't your normal themed up proper thing. We're just recording this on the phone. And I wanted to get a video out this morning just to update you because um, it's very important to show you what we're up to because we are... On the farm. <laughs> on a farm, a as farm. you can see, there's a tractor's behind us. You can't smell it but there's haylage in here and it smells amazing. We have stayed overnight at uh, a farm in West Suffolk um, at uh, the, uh, the pleasure of um, a, ch a farmer called Ray. We've come up to see Mark Byford, the bowler hatted farmer, farmer um, who has been looking after us, recorded an interview which will probably go out tomorrow. Uh, so something to look forward to. And we're off today to see another farm, which is a council farm. And these are quite rare. Um, that has just been taken on. There's going to be some tree planting, but that's not their main thing. I think uh, they're doing nut trees, I believe it is. Uh, yeah. Or fruit trees. Fruit trees. Fruit trees. Fruit trees. Um, and then I think they're going to be looking at salads and vegetables and, and all of that, which we want to bring to the channel. Yeah, they're, We've, they're also using the no-dig method, aren't they? Absolutely. Apart from the trees, of That's course. That's the, uh, the Charles Dowding no-dig method, um, which is fascinating. So we'll be reporting on that. Um, we stayed overnight. We were in an, a massive great big barn. It's huge. I cannot tell you how big it is. I mean, you could probably get, um, I would almost say, my, my street of... Uh, terrace, terrace houses, houses in fit there. neatly inside Which, completely and I mean, have is, room to spare and regulars. It is incredible. Chimneys. Um, and we've we slept in here, but in the van, which yes. you can just about see yeah. there, I think. In a tin can, in a tin can. Yes, uh, which was interesting. There is also, just to add to the fun, lots of farm equipment on floor. Lots of farm equipment. Try not to trip over it, my lovely Julia. But just over there again, just out of sight, there's a great big pile of straw. And inside it are rats, because that's what they do. And the rats were nibbling away, and, and actually if one went up to them, you could hear them and munching and munching. Um, because I'm not holding the camera and we've actually balanced, it's just my phone, otherwise I would have taken you around. Yeah. But I don't want to show too much of the place because we haven't really got permission to do that. Um, one of the other things, I mean, the reason for this is to find out about farming, because the lovely Julia and I, we are desperately looking for a piece of land that will be ours to... To be guardian of. To be guardian of. Cultivate and nurture and learn and put all our all desires our ideas. into... Uh, absolutely. And the thing is that I think it's interesting when we do anything about food, food security, farming, um, you'll notice that the views on the channel go down. And it's as if people are just not interested because they don't seem to understand that food security is the most important thing. And it's something that we've taken for granted for so long. We can go to the convenience store, we can go to the superstore. Food always seems to be there. And we've forgotten that that's not always been the case. Mm -hmm. Some people think that this country wouldn't be able to grow enough food for itself, even now. But we're absolutely certain that that's not the case. We, we, we think more can be done absolutely. when you're nurturing the, the, the soil properly. So much of the, um, what you see the farms with the monoculture is aiming to provide the Commodity? big... The, yeah, the, these commodities of grain and oats and things. So much of this monoculture is grown to be highly processed foods that end up in the supermarkets without any real nutrients and goodness in it for the people. And this type of farming, this industrial scale farming, is not actually benefiting not only humans or wildlife, but the soil itself mm. and the ground. And we have ended up over the last 80 years poisoning um, very much this country and, and countries that follow this. And yet, this does seem to be um, the corner that farmers have been backed into and thinking it's the only way forward. But as we've seen, as more and more people are aware of the threat from the policies of the WEF, the 
no farming uh, policies, that the government is actually paying people not to produce food. We realize that you can grow food and many more initiatives are going out, people are getting together and they realize the importance of it. And part of what we want to learn is to put forward and inspire others to realize and understand just how essential food is because I think that food shortages are going to come. People will suddenly realize that there is no food and they'll start to think, oh God, what do I do? That thing I've taken for granted that I normally just sit in front of a screen and just fill my gob with something mm -hmm. is no longer an option. Yeah. Um, and, and now th this might become as a bit of a challenge, but then if I had said in December 2020, 2019, if I'd said to you, oh, the government's going to lock you up in your house and there'll be this mystery thing that's going to infect you and later on you'll all be queuing up to have something injected into you, you would have thought I was raving mad. Mm. So now when you're, we're talking about big things like the lack of food, people have got to take that seriously mm. and we've got to mitigate and plan for it. We've got to start investing ourselves, our time and our attention to these things and where the food comes from, don't we? And what we are loving here is putting all the things we've read about and been learning about, putting it all together in the seeing and the experiencing and being here. And, and talking, to, talking to real farmers who've been doing it for, for you know, a, as, long time. As, a long time, as Ray has, who's understand, understood now he's got to change how he does his farming. Um, he's looking at new methods because, and where he sells it, sells his produce to and to whom because we are going through a sea change now and unfortunately not many farmers are awake they they still think that the government is doing the right thing they think that net zero is a, is a, a sensible policy um, and even one of the veg box I mean I don't know about the, the others but they're certainly the most famous veg box company also believes in the myth of global warming. This is frightening, um, and yet their produce is brilliant. I mean, it's fantastic, but they're spending too much time worrying about something that isn't a problem. And so it's down to us. It is down to the likes of you watching it, me, farmers like Ray, Mark, and others, to really try and get the message home that actually we do need to think of a new way um, and it's very much an old way of farming integrated with some of the new technologies um, and, and get people back on the land and respecting food. And that's really what our mission is mm -hmm. in the next couple of days. But anyway, we thought we'd update you in what we're doing. I don't mean to preach or anything, but it's, it's just so <coughs> vital that people do understand what it is that they're, they're eating, how it affects their body, where it comes from and what happens if you haven't got any. Anyway, I'll be back uh, with another video tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. And because it's on the phone, we're going to now turn it straight <laughs> off.